Hello Akuma fans, Charlie with the Gossiker application staff with another video for you on how to get a three axis vertical Akuma ready for operation. We will be doing horizontals in the future, but uh, for now let's just focus on a three axis vertical. Let's go ahead and take a look at the picture of my machine and you'll see that, yep, this is a, th this particular machine is, could be a uh, Genos M560 or a uh, MB66, it's just a vertical machine, three axis. We're not going to worry about uh, you know, rotary stages at this point. We really just want to get focused on how to make your, your, your three axis vertical ready to rock and roll. The first and probably the most important uh, uh, item to deal with is going to be the configuration parameters for the machine itself. When it comes in there is going to be some default items from the factory that we will probably need to modify. So the first thing we'll do after we power up the machine is go over to our parameter button on the machine tool. That's the little P with the square and the arrow moving in and out. When you first touch it, you'll notice that the program zero or the work offset is the first item that's displayed. And uh, before we go through the oh, half dozen parameters that uh, I like to modify, the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that the menu for these parameter items is fully displayed. There's an ability to screen out parameters that we don't necessarily want uh, visible during machine operation, but during the setup process, we want them. So my first move is to reach up and touch the F8 display change soft key, and that will display the menu items that uh, are available from the parameter button. Now to make sure that they're all visible, I'm with this, uh, with this menu up, I'll push the arrow right button one time. That's the little black key next to F8. And you'll find that the value of F1 changes to menu, menu change. By touching that, you get a second pop-up window. And I wanna make sure that there's a check mark in front of the very first item, which is all display. Now, once you've done this and if, uh, you're all completed with your parameters, it's perfectly okay to come back in and deselect items that you don't think a, uh, an operator is going to need on a daily basis. And then we can remove the all display check mark and make it go away. But for now, we want everything showing so that we don't have to scratch our heads and wonder why we don't have a value that uh, we're looking for. Once I say OK, now this menu is completely populated with all of the items that are available for uh, for the machine tool itself. The program zero feature that was showing in the beginning, I'm not going to worry about that because that's the only time I need that is when I'm setting up a part and uh, that's not what we're worried about right now. So as I go down the list, the, uh, the first item that comes up that's of importance is the G and M code macro uh, profile. If you have a tool change macro or uh, something that needs to be uh, needs to be registered, I need to put in the program name in front of the individual M or G code. So in my case, I like to use a tool change macro that the title of the program is OG116. So by highlighting the G116, which is what I use to call that tool change macro, and I'll touch the word set and type in the letters that correspond with the program. In this case, that program is OG116. We'll do the same for any M codes that we happen to have, but uh, if you don't have a tool change macro, well, then we'll just skip over that step. But I've registered that one, so I'm gonna touch my display change. The next item down is the uh, input unit system. So let's close that down. This is um, this is how I'm selecting whether I'm going to run the machine in inch or metric. So I will highlight the unit system. It's currently in metric and well heck I want to run an inch. So I'll highlight this and touch the menu button and select inch programming. By default there should be a one in each one of those uh, each one of the columns that you see displayed here. If it's not set to one, yeah, make sure you change that. Highlight the item, 
do a menu. Oops, let's cancel that. Touch the item, highlight the menu, and uh, set it to one so that we know that all of those items are set to the, the increment that we want. Uh, if they were set already by default, don't stress, that's exactly what we wanted, and everybody's happy. The next item, we'll go to display change, and now I'm going to just skip over a whole bunch of this stuff until we find the one that's optional parameter synchronized tapping. By touching that one and closing the window, now I have parameters related to synchronized tapping, and there are two things on this that I want to change. First off, G84 or G74, left and right hand tapping, by the factory default is set to a floating tap holder. Uh, in general, I like to change that to synchronized tapping. It pretty much does the same thing, but by calling it a sync tap, this means that it's going to be far more accurate. And um, even if you are using a floating holder, I do like to use the sync tap option because it just means it's, it's more precise and it's not relying on the, the synchronized holder to make up for abnormalities. If you don't set this, the machine is assuming that you're gonna use G284 for rigid tap and G84 for floating tap. But in my case, I like to set it to sync tap. That way G84 and 284 are both being treated as a, a, a rigid tap. Second thing on the return speed, I like to set this up to 200%. Basically, the, uh, the software engineers know that the tap is only cutting on the way into a hole. So you might as well just go as fast as we can to get out of the hole. And by setting this to 200%, that means it will go into the hole at your called out feed rate. And just as it describes, it'll double that feed, weight, feed rate for the retraction. And so it's spending less time per cycle. That's it for the uh, synchronized tapping page. So now let's jump to the next optional parameter, operating relation parameters. This one you don't have to change, but it's a little nicety that uh, a lot of people like to know about. And this is the very first item, cycle start at setting. So Akuma in general wants you to be looking at this primary page when you hit cycle start. This is uh, the main operating screen, so you can see all of the information about the machine. If you happen to be looking at the tool data page and you try to push the cycle start button, it will not do anything unless you take this parameter and tell it, yes, it is possible to cycle start the machine at the settings page. It's just a little safety so that you get to control uh, what someone is looking at when they push the go button. Uh, if you would rather that they do go to the main operating screen, you can leave that at uh, impossible. And there won't be an alarm. It will just say simply that um, uh, it, it won't do anything. You just push the green button and nothing happens. The other item that I, uh, I change is I double check this bottom running method of main program. Now, some of you may already know that uh, the machine all Akumas have the ability to uh, DNC from their hard drive. So you have a 76 gigabyte program maximum. If you run in the A method, that's your standard running method, you have a limit of just about two megabyte program size. If it gets larger than that, then we use the B method or S method, which drip feeds from the, from the hard drive. I have another video on YouTube that describes this in detail, but this is the default method that the program will be running when we, uh, unless we do something special. We can change it on the fly without coming to this page, but the default condition, I like to have a method because it's the, the most simple, um, uh, simple in terms of the uh, requirements what do you have to do to edit a program or delete it or, 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 or. So I like staying in the A method. Now we're going to do a display change and let's talk about the home position. Akuma has the ability to memorize 32 different positions in the machine that could be relevant to your part process. On a vertical mill, 
the first home position or home position one, we want to leave that guy alone. That belongs to the tool changer and we don't ever want to monkey with it. So if that one doesn't belong to you, I would leave it alone at all cost. However, if you want, let's say for instance, to program a position in the machine that the, uh, the axes will move to Z fully retracted, X and Y at the center of the table, uh, I'm sorry, X at the center of the table and the Y all the way forward, we can program that into say home position 32 and the program will call it up by saying G30 P 32. And that'll command the machine to look at this value that you've selected in uh, home position 32 and move the machine to that prior to uh, terminating the program. So in order to set that, I'm going to go into my uh, manual mode and I'm physically going to put the machine in the position that I want, which is right like that. The Z in full retract in the middle of travel and the table all, all the way forward. So now the machine is currently in the position that I want to call P32. So I'll highlight the X, I'll say calibrate input Y axis, calibrate input, and the Z axis, calibrate input. Now here's a step that I can't forget to do. Once I've, cal once I've put in the home position that I want, I do have to go to the very next pro uh, parameter, home position, home position movement order, and I have to tell the machine which order do I want the axes to move when I call up that individual home position. In my case, I always want to retract the Z first, so I will set a one in the Z axis so that it will always retract before the other two axes move. And Y will set that to the second movement order. And in, in this case, let's say that the X axis will also be a, uh, in motion two so that X and Y will move at the same time and we can save a little time and uh, little time and hassle before uh, uh, at the end of our program. All right, so let's move on. There is uh, another parameter when we go down a little bit, you'll find either high cut pro control parameter or super NURBS control parameter, depending on which options, options you bought. Uh, I do have a couple of videos on high cut and super NURBS, but for now, let's just highlight that and close the, uh, the display change menu. So this is the uh, high speed machine cutter control parameter. Basically, if the machine is moving too fast, this high cut control will cause the machine to uh, slow down and be more accurate uh, as you go around corners. A lot of people like to have the machine just do this without you thinking about it. So that is the, in order to set the parameters that way, we'll highlight the execution mode, touch menu and say control on. So now every time you have a G1, two or three mode, it'll be in cutter control mode. If you leave this to control off, the programs will be looking to you to supply a G131 to turn the, the cutter control on and G130 to turn it off. We also will want to uh, set our maximum feed rate. This is, uh, the machine will not exceed this feed rate. Even if I command 500 inches per minute, the feed rate upper limit right now is set to 236. And uh, so I like to set that to whatever my shop feels is the maximum feed rate we're going to run. So maybe 800 inches a minute, that, it'll give you plenty of, of program clearance. The machining mode can either be standard or high speed. In general, I leave it for standard. That, that's going to do just fine. We don't need to, um, uh, we don't need to modify that. There is another possibility for your machine. If you look at your keypad, you have two white buttons for specify position one and specify position two. If we turn back on our parameters, those positions are listed under specify position. 
there's number one and if I use my page down button you can see specify position two these are a manual uh, manual position in the machine very similar to the home positions but the home positions need to be uh, called from either MDI or a program whereas the specify positions you can move to simply by touching the specify position one or two button in manual mode and this particular parameter combines those two locations you, you saw the the home position and the home position movement order well specify position has the X Y and Z set exactly the same way we did the uh, the previous calibrate input but the movement order is on the same page so we will do the same thing we'll set that to one set movement order Z to one set movement order Y to two and uh, by the way in the manual mode I cannot move two axes at the same time so if I set the X it will not allow me to put a two in there I would have to say yep we're gonna set that to movement order three now anytime I'm in manual mode and I push the specify position button it'll move to that location so now that is it for the parameter page you can uh, uh, breeze through there in about five minutes flat and have your machine ready to go. So please look for the second, third, and fourth video in this series to uh, help you get your machine up and running.